I'd like you to think about your favorite celebrities for a minute. We grow up watching them on TV and listening to their music, so much so that it can seem like we know them. Oftentimes we identify them with the characters or role they play on TV, and they're so relatable that they almost feel like family. Well, every year we hear about these different celebrities we grew up with pass away. Some of the ones just over the last year, like Bob Barker, Tina Turner, Loretta Lynn, James Caan. Um, and we can even throw into the category of celebrity. I know it wasn't last year, but like someone like Queen Elizabeth II or Pope Benedict XVI. Uh, their deaths for a moment remind us that life doesn't last forever. Even the rich and famous can't cheat death. Our lives will eventually come to an end. Isaiah, he emphasizes this in our first reading. He says, seek the Lord while he may be found, which means seek the Lord, repent of our sins while we still have time, because the day of judgment will come, and at that point, it'll be too late. St. Augustine, he had a quote in regards to this. He said, do not say tomorrow I will be converted. Tomorrow I will give thanks to God, and all my sins, today's and yesterday's, will be forgiven. It is true that God promises forgiveness for for your conversion, but he does not promise tomorrow for your delays. What God has given us, brothers and sisters, is a time of mercy. He once told St. Faustina that before the day of justice, I'm sending the day of mercy. And this is the time that we find ourselves in. Wherever we are in our lives, God's given us time to repent, to return to him, and even more than this, to cooperate with him in spreading the gospel and the message of mercy to all mankind. I love our first reading today because Isaiah, he makes the point that our thoughts are not God's thoughts and our ways are not his ways. At times, God can be incomprehensible and beyond reason. Think about someone who's on death row. Uh, As a serial killer, he brought so much pain and suffering to people's lives. In prison, though, he underwent a conversion, and now a few days before his execution, he meets with a priest. He goes to confession, and he receives absolution. Well, based on the teachings of the church, whether we like it or not, a person like this will be in heaven with God. God, he's like the landowner in our gospel who hires people throughout the day and at the end of the day, well, he hires people throughout the day and at the end of the day, and no matter what time they went to work for him, he gives them a full day's wage. Well, God does this with the sinner. A person can live a sinful life, and then at the end of the day, they can receive mercy and be welcomed into paradise. Now, there's a lot of factors that go into that, so don't try to test God by indulging in your passions, hoping to receive mercy on your deathbed. Um, But what this parable is emphasizing is what Isaiah said, God's ways are not our ways, and his thoughts are not our thoughts. Our job isn't to question how God distributes his graces, because at the end of the day, every grace and even our very lives are a gift from God. And so he's free to do with each of us as he wills. He knows what's best for us and what we need in order to get to heaven. St. Therese of Lisieux, she kind of struggled with this in her life, and she often asked herself why God had preferences, why all souls didn't receive an equal measure of grace. And it's a really good question. Uh, I think many times people will fall into the temptation of envy or jealousy when they see God's grace working in someone else's life. They want to stifle their joy and progress. It's as if they're losing something when God gives his grace to someone else. When really, the opposite is true. We, uh, the grace that God gives someone else, it's really meant to build up the whole body of Christ. And so we should rejoice when we see God working in someone else's life and give thanks for his goodness and mercy to that person. And uh, St. Therese, she did eventually get uh, a response to her question. She was praying one day, and she learned, she said this, she said, Our Lord has deigned to explain this mystery to me. He showed me the book of nature, and I understood that every flower created by him is beautiful, that the brilliance of the rose and the whiteness of the lily do not lessen the perfume of the violet 
or the sweet simplicity of the daisy. I understood that if all the lowly flowers wished to be roses, nature would lose its springtime beauty, and the fields would no longer be enameled with lovely hues. And so it is in the world of souls, our Lord's living garden. He has been pleased to create great saints, who may be compared to the lily and the rose, but he has also created lesser ones, who must be content to be daisies or simple violets, flowering at his feet, and whose mission it is to gladden his divine eyes when he deigns to look down on them. And the more gladly they do his will, the greater their perfection. We all find ourselves in the vineyard of God, brothers and sisters, and we're all given different graces and different tasks to do in his vineyard. Our job is to tend to the work that he's given us and to grow in our own personal holiness so that we can benefit others in the vineyard. We've been given a time of mercy, and soon the day of justice will come. But we can prepare for that day by seeking God, and as St. Paul said in our second reading, by conducting ourselves in a way worthy of the gospel of Christ. And we can do this by practicing the spiritual and corporal works of mercy. Uh, In those, God, he's given us a means to exercise mercy by deed, by word, and by prayer. And it's in these three degrees that he told St. Faustina is contain the fullness of mercy and their unquestionable proof of love for him. If we live this life in God's good graces, receiving mercy and then showing mercy to others, we won't have anything to worry about when that day of justice comes because God will see the flower or the saint he's made us to be and will receive the gift of our eternal inheritance.